Pydentic AI just released graph support called Pydentic Graph, which in my opinion is a game-changing feature that will revolutionize your AI agent workflow. In this tutorial, I will go through how to use the new graphs feature. This is going to be a tutorial aiming for intermediate to advanced developers. Giving the graph data structure is a quite advanced topic. But once you grasp the use of Pydentic graph structure, it can significantly improve your agent workflow. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is Pydentic AI graph? If we look at the documentation, Pydentic graph is an async graph and a state machine library for Python, where nodes and edges are defined using type hints. You can think of it as a sophisticated way to organize your AI agent's decision-making process, like creating a flowchart. It is specifically designed to work alongside Pydentic AI, though you can actually use it independently for any graph-based state machine applications. If you have worked with DAG, it is a very similar concept, except it is bidirectional. To install Pydentic Graph on a terminal, run the command pip install Pydentic Graph. If you don't have Pydentic AI installed, I would recommend you install the Python package also. I will share a few examples later to demonstrate how to incorporate Pydentic Graph into your workflow once I cover the key components. There are four main components you need to understand Graph Run Context and nodes and graph itself. Think of these as the Lego pieces you'll use to build your AI agent workflow. Graph Run Context works similar to Run Context in Pydentic AI, holds the state of the graph and dependencies. Imagine you're running a relay race. Graph Run Context is like the baton that gets passed between runners. It carries important information about the current state of your graph and any dependencies it needs. It's what keeps everything connected and flowing smoothly as your program runs. Next, we have end. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's how we tell our graph we're done here. When a node returns an end value, it's like reaching the finish line of our race. This is particularly useful when you want your AI workflow to conclude based on certain conditions. The third component is nodes. These are the workhorses of your graph. Think of them as the individual decision points or actions in your AI workflow. Nodes can have three important aspects. Their state, which is like their memory. Their dependencies, which are the tools they need to do their job and their graph return type, which determines what happens when they finish their task. Here's a practical way to think about nodes. Imagine you're building a customer service AI. Each node might represent a different action. One node might greet the customer, another might analyze their question, and yet another might formulate a response. Each node knows what it can do next. Just like a customer service representative knows what steps they can take after hearing a customer's request. And the last component is Graph. Graph is the executioner of your node workflow. Think of it as the master blueprint that brings all our other components together. It's like a conductor coordinating an orchestra, making sure every node plays its part at exactly the right time. Just like our nodes, a graph can work with three important types of information state type, which is shared across all nodes, dependency type, which defines what external tools or services are available, return type, which determines what kind of result the entire graph can produce. Let me give you a simple example. Imagine we're building a graph that helps an AI find the next number divisible by 5. Our graph might start with a node that checks if a number is divisible by 5, and if it isn't, pass it to another node that increments the number. This process continues until we find what we're looking for. And that's the four key components you need to understand to start incorporating Pydentic Graph into your workflow. Now let's learn how to use Pydentic Graph library in Python. 
The examples I am going to share are modified versions of examples from Pydentic AI's documentation to make them easier to understand. Let's start with a very basic example to understand Pydentic graph usage. To start, let's import data class and the four key Pydentic graph components. And here's a diagram illustrating the graph workflow we are going to build in this example. The whole process that you are looking at is what we called graph. In the graph, we have a starting point, which is when we start running a script. Then the graph will start with node A to node B or node C. End will be the destination of the workflow that returns the final result. Next, let's define the nodes. For starters, I will create three nodes, node A, B, and C. Node A will be the starting node. Node B will be the decision maker to decide if it should continue to node C or it should end the execution. Node C will be the final stop if execution continues past node B. Please note that in a graph, all nodes must have the same base class type. This is critical. You cannot have one node with a string data type and another with an integer data type. In each node, define a field called track number. We're going to use the track number to simulate the decision logic. Next, insert the run method in each node. If we look at the output data type in each node, node A being the starting point and does not make any decisions, it will simply pass the track number to node B. Node B, on the other hand, where is a decision maker, it can either pass the track number to node C or simply end the execution. If track number is passed to node C, this will be the end of the execution. Therefore, it can only return as an end object. This is basically the general default node setup. You can use this as a boilerplate. Now, Let's implement the task logic. In node A, the only task it will perform is to deliver the track number to node B. In the run function, we will print a message calling node A and pass the track number to node B. In node B, which is the decision making workflow. Let's say if track number is equals to one, we will end the execution. Otherwise, we will pass the track number to node C. And in node C, we will return an end object with the output value to end the execution. Now that we have finished set up the nodes, the next step is create the graph. As mentioned earlier, a graph serves as the execution engine of a workflow. You can think of it as a pipeline that holds different containers where each container represents a node responsible for executing a specific task. To set up a graph, create a graph object with the nodes assigned to the nodes parameter in the correct sequence. From the graph object, use the run method to trigger the workflow. In the run method, make sure to specify the start node and the input value. For testing, let's set the track number value to 1. For the output, the graph object will return two items. One is the result, which is the tracking number, and the other is the history of the run. Now, let's run the script and see what happens. From the output, node A is triggered first. In node B, it returns the tracking number based on the if logic in place. If we change the input value from 1 to 4, all the nodes will get triggered. Now let's look at a different example with AI agent involved. For the second example, we are going to incorporate AI agents into Pydentic Graph to create an email feedback AI agent workflow to self-correct email messages. Again, this is a modified version of an example from Pydentic AI's documentation to keep the code a bit more organized and easier to read. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. If you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. Now create a Python file and name it 
loadmodels.py. In the file, construct the model object you wish to use. Create a Python file and name it emailfeedback.py. This will be the main routine to run the workflow. In the file, import the Python libraries showing on the screen. Next, let's define the user data classes we will be using. We will use the user data class to store users' info, state data class to hold user and agent messages, and email data class to define an email message. For the output data type, create two base model classes, email requires write and email OK. Now let's create the AI agents. The email writer agent will be responsible for drafting a welcome email. The feedback agent will review the email drafted by the email writer agent to check if it meets all the requirements. If not, it will send it back to the email writer agent with feedback for revision. Therefore, for the output type, it can either be email requires write or email OK to indicate no revision is needed. Now, let's set up the notes. The write email note will handle the email writing logic, and the feedback note will review the email from the write email note to determine whether it should be sent back to the write email note for revision. If not, it will end the workflow and return the drafted email. Now, let's implement the write email logic. For the initial message draft, the feedback is set to none. If email feedback is presented, then in the updated prompt, we will include the feedback generated from the feedback agent for the rewrite. Otherwise, we will simply draft a generic welcome email with the user's name and email. However, one of the requirements is that the email must mention the user's interest. So it is likely that the feedback agent will reject the first email draft. Next. Send the request to the email writer agent to draft an email and pass the email to the feedback note. In the feedback note, we will format the prompt as XML format and send the request with the feedback agent. From the feedback agent output, if result type is an email require write object, we will call the write email note with feedback included. Otherwise, we'll call the end node with the email object as the final output. Once we define the agents and nodes, the rest is pretty straightforward. Define the email graph with write email and feedback nodes. Create a user instance with user's information and a state object to be used as dependencies. The dependencies here will be referenced using graph run context in the run method. And the final step is execute the graph with state dependency. Now let's run the script and see what happens. If we look at the log output, in the first call, the write email node drafts an email message and passes the email message to the feedback node for reviewing. In the second call, which is executed by the feedback node, the email is reviewed, and it notices that interests are not mentioned and name is incorrect. It then generates feedback that includes the necessary corrections and sends the feedback back to the right email node, which will then pass it to the right email agent for reference. In the third call, the write email node took the feedback and passed it on to the email writer agent. The email writer agent then rewrote the welcome email and passed it back to the write email node, going back and forth until all the issues are corrected. There are two more examples I will cover later in a separate video since they are a lot more complicated and require a more detailed explanation. But for now, this is everything I am going to cover in this video which should be more than enough to get started with Pedantic Graph. If you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.